Under two months to go until the election jobs report comes out on Friday. Underwhelms once again. They revised the two prior months' jobs numbers down as well for June and July. So what is really going on? Ken Coleman, host of The Ken Coleman Show. Find it wherever you get your podcasts. You also hear him on this station as a co-host on The Ramsey Show. 3 to 5 on KCMO 95.7 FM. As always, we are streaming on the KCMO Talk Radio app. Ken, good morning. That Friday jobs number comes in below expectations. What do you think is going on with this economy at large and this jobs number? I think um, if I were going to sum it up with three words, it would be wait and see. I I think a lot of corporate America is in a wait and see mode. If you think about this election season, it's just been unbelievable. You know, from the summer to where we are right now, it's been quite a roller coaster ride, massive changes, what's really going on. Poll, new poll numbers come out every day. And I think, you know, corporate America sees that. And 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 if you look at the policy of the Fed, uh, they've done exactly what they said they were going to do. This is a longstanding strategy to keep interest rates high after raising them, or higher, mm-hmm. we should say. And it cools the labor market. And that's exactly how that goes. So I think you've got a wait-and-see situation. You look at these job numbers. Uh, you know, it's it's only going to take a couple of massive companies doing some layoffs potentially this fall. And you have a monkey see, monkey do mentality in corporate America as well. And that could be a real blow. Right now, we're just seeing a cooling, no question, in the labor market. Uh, people aren't hiring as much. It's not so much that layoffs are the issue. It's just people aren't hiring. Uh, and in the sil- – kind of down in the details, we have about a million Americans more – than this time last year that are unemployed. That's not a good sign. No, it's not. So how does the Fed respond to this coming up in their meeting next week? Well, I mean, you're reading the same stuff I'm reading, I presume. But, I mean, you've got everybody predicting from uh, a quarter point to a half point. A lot of people are, are clamoring, asking for a half point, essentially. Will the Fed do that? I don't know. Uh, part of me says it will be a gradual raise. Because Powell has gone through a pretty systematic approach on this uh, to create a little bit of pain to stave off inflation. These quotes were, we'll do whatever it takes. So I don't see all of a sudden him flipping to a half point. But to be completely honest with you, Pete, nobody knows except for the people inside that room, and they may not know as of yet. So September 18th, uh, it's going to be an interesting day. If it were to be a half point raise, given the emotional makeup of our country right now, Pete, with everybody reacting off of TikToks and Reels on Instagram and the 24-hour news, um, a half-point raise could create some false consumer confidence, but it could have positive effects on the economy going into the election. Um, so that's something I'm waiting to see. You know, how, how does this get – how does this get received by the American people? If it's, if it's a quarter point, is it a yawn? Is, if it's a half point, is it a celebration? That'll be interesting to watch. Ken Coleman is here on KCMO, host of the Ken Coleman Show, Ramsey personality, also hearing him three to five weekdays on KCMO. Now, one number I saw over the weekend, Ken, is that the number of people categorized as not in the labor force is over 5 million more than it was pre-pandemic. Um, over 100 million people now not in the labor force. That number was about 95 million pre-pandemic. What does that mean just for the country at large? And also, I know this is especially a problem amongst young men, which is something you spend a lot of time talking about. Yeah, it's a real problem, Pete. You know, the question is, why isn't America working? And this is not a political statement. It's a practical question. What's going on? And I I think when we talk about young men, the data is out there. Um, These are young men who had big dreams, uh, may have been unrealistic dreams, but nonetheless big dreams. They weren't met. They feel lost in society. They feel like they can't achieve what they wanted to achieve, so now they've just taken their ball and gone home. And in this case, it's real. They've got friends and family members who are essentially allowing them to coast through life. So that's one big factor. I think you see a lot of people that got out or were pushed out via layoffs uh, during the pandemic who just didn't come back. We know that for sure. Um, So, you know, you're talking about millions of people who just said, nope, uh, I'm going to figure out another way. And, And so is it a problem? Yes, it's a problem because we can't continue to rely on foreign workers. 
that's that's a real issue that changes a lot but also to that point ken there while it's not political in the sense of left versus right there is a political element if you are adding millions of people um and taking them out of the labor force and potentially putting them on some kind of a government program god forbid not that we shouldn't have a safety that's net right. but having something larger than a safety net for those in need does have political ramifications in the country right well, there's no question. There's no question, and and so you, now you're getting into uh, a platform that is that is custom built for socialism to ride in on the white horse. And we're seeing with the younger generations, the concept of socialism seems really great because, as you know, it is a a bait and switch. Uh, it, it, it's it's socialism leads to communism, and there's just no question that um, the demographics right now in the American workforce. We are set up for that. We are, we are, and again, I'm not trying to be an alarmist. I'm answering your question as literally mm-hmm. as you asked it. There's no question that when you see these kind of labor numbers that you just mentioned and this distrust uh, across the board of, of, of businesses, like they're bad, uh, corporations are bad, government's good, all of that sets up for a really troubling uh, acceptance of, of the tenets of socialism, which are rampant in the United States right now. I'm sure you talk about it on a daily basis. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Ken Coleman, I got to ask you, I know you just dropped this on your show uh, this morning, the Ken Coleman show, strategies to manage your micromanager. How many people go into the office right now are dreading the micromanager mm-hmm. that they've got on top of them? So give me a, give me a little kernel there, a little just something, Ken, to chew on before <laughs> we listen later today. Yeah, okay. I'll give you one, just a, a summary. Uh, what you have to do when you have a micromanager is you have got to get inside their head as best you can to try to figure out why are they micromanaging. The answer to that is fear. Uh, it, they are afraid uh, of a bad result happening if they aren't super hands-on. And so what happens is they begin to hover. So one of the techniques that you can use is you've got to – figure what that is, and then show them that you aren't a part of what they are afraid could happen. In other words, you build trust by relieving their worries and fears as it relates to you. And so what you want them to do is you almost want them to fly away and go, okay, I don't need to mess with Ken or Pete. I'll go over here. And so to the extent that you can understand what's really driving that fear and controlling attitudes – then you alleviate that fear through what you do, what you say, and then the idea is they fly away and they'll focus on somebody else that represents their fear. So basically give them a reason to micromanage somebody else. <laughs> yeah, that, 100%. Okay. So you're not changing yeah, them. The you're not changing them. Well, you you're can't. just changing your relationship with them. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. Like, think about that. You, you can't be their therapist. Uh, you can't be their coach. So it's a form of leading up. And so what you have to do is, is go, I'm going to address their fears for all of us, but I'm going to address them the only way that I can, which is what I can control. And to the extent that they begin to trust you and have great confidence in you, uh, yes, they will move on. Now, I will say this, that if you can then lead around you, by having your coworkers realize, hey, here's what I did. If we do this, they're just worried about this. Let's come to the table with a solution. And then you can take an unhealthy, fearful leader and you can almost lead them. So, I mean, that is the greater strategy. But for many people, I just wanted to give them something tactical that they can use in the office to get these people out of your business. Because that's what's so um, that's what's so detrimental in the workplace is when you have a leader who doesn't give you any autonomy and is constantly on top of you. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Ken Coleman, host of the Ken Coleman Show. You hear him on the Ramsey Show three to five weekdays on KCMO. Ken, thank you, my friend. Have a great week. Always appreciate the time and the insights. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you. All right. Great job, as always, with our friend Ken Coleman on KCMO 95.7 FM. We are streaming on the iHeart and uh, TuneIn apps as well.